we'll be talking about the adol reaction and condensation. According to chemistrylearner.com, this is used in many bodily mechanisms such as glycolysis, gluconeogenesis, and photosynthesis when you're talking about plants. Also, in industry, it is used in the production of perfume. So we have written out, written out here is a um, reaction involved, involving acetone and formaldehyde, and when it's reacted with NaOH, or any base for that matter, it reacts to form the aldol product. And then when you add heat, the aldol product will form the condensation product. So we're going to review the aldol reaction a little bit in depth. This is the first part, not including the aldol condensation, which we will talk about a little later. This reaction can be divided into two parts, the enolate formation and the nucleophilic attack. So for the first part, the OH will attack an alpha or hydrogen off this one, forming a carb anion. Our common question a lot of students have is um, which alpha hydrogen to attack. Um, we will discuss that a little later on in the video. So the next step of this reaction, the carb anion will attack We'll do a simple nucleophilic attack, simple nucleophilic attack, and attack this carbonyl on the formaldehyde, and then we'll do a simple quenching step to form the official aldol product. So let me write that aldol product. So we're going to address this common question, which alpha carbon should I attack, or alpha hydrogen should I attack? So we have three scenarios written out. So the first scenario is if the ketone is symmetrical. So this means the um, alpha carbons are the exact same. So in this case, it doesn't matter which side you attack, if you prefer right or left is the answer. So let's write, write this out. You can attack, so these right here are alpha carbons. And you can attack any of the alpha hydrogens listed out here. And the second scenario is if there's only one alpha carbon with hydrogens. In this case, you must attack one of those. So right here, you have a phenyl ring that does not have any alpha hydrogens. It will only be on this side. So you would attack one of these alpha hydrogens. And the third scenario, which is probably the most complex, if there are two alpha carbons with hydrogens. So this means they're, in this case, they're unequal. So this means you either will form the kinetic product or the thermodynamic product. So in this case, if you are forming the kinetic product, this means you are using a bigger base and it will attack a less sterically hindered um, side. This will happen in colder reactions. Um, and then when you f form the thermodynamic product, this will occur when you have smaller bases and they will attack more sterically hindered sides, which will produce a more stable product. So the last thing we'll be talking about in the actual adult reaction is an intramolecular, intramolecular um, adult reaction. So right here we have two different pathways. So two different paths of alpha hydrogens which we can attack. We can either attack one of these on in the middle between the two um, carbonyls or the alpha hydrogen hydrogen on the alpha carbon on the outside. So pathway A is going to attack the alpha hydrogen in the middle. So we'll form a carbon anion there, which we discussed earlier. And then the carb anion will attack the carbonyl, forming this membered ring with um, a quenching step already added in. This right here is a five-membered ring, which will be important in a minute. And then the second pathway, the step the OME attacks this alpha hydrogen, forming that carbon anion on the outside. And in this case, it will attack the same way. And it will form a seven-membered ring, which here is a frowning face. This product will not form. It will prefer the five-membered ring because five and six membered rings are more stable. Reduced selectivity will prefer the five or six membered rings. Now we're gonna talk about the aldol condensation reaction. So you take your aldol product, you can catalyze it with either an acid or a base, 
You may or may not need to add heat, which we'll talk about later, and you will form an alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compound, which means that the bond between the alpha carbon and the beta carbon will be a double bond. To walk you through the mechanism for this, we're gonna start with this aldol product on the left, and this hydrogen is going to be picked up by the OH of the aldol product. This is going to form an OH2, which makes a very good leaving group. So he's gonna get kicked off, which is gonna leave us with a carbocation. This H2O up here is going to grab that hydrogen. And this bond from the hydrogen is going to flip down to form a double bond between those two carbons and attach to that carbocation. And then up here, we're left with our alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyl compound. This can also be catalyzed using a base, which I'll show you down here. So in the base catalyzed situation, this base is going to grab this hydrogen, which forms this carb anion. At this point, the carb anion is going to form a double bond between the two carbons, and this OH is going to be kicked off as a leaving group which results in the same alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compound as the acid catalyzed. We mentioned before that some need heat and some do not. No heat is required if the condensation product has a double bond conjugated to a benzene ring. So conjugated means that there is a double bond, a single bond, and another double bond. So two double bonds with one single bond in between. For example, when we take this aldehyde, react it with a base to form an aldol product over here on the right. This hydrogen and this OH are going to be lost to form the condensation product down here. And because this double bond is conjugated to this benzene ring, it's a super stable conjugated system and no heat is required for the condensation. 